What up? This is Ram Ashkin covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Netflix series Outer Banks Season 3. Hey, before you watch my review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, ring that bell, so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. Let's rock this. First up, I would like to say thank you to Netflix for granting me the screeners to this entire new season. Ah yes, the Pogues are back. Hell yeah, I freaking love this show. Big, big fan of the previous two seasons, and I'm happy to inform you that this new season three of this very yellow-tinted young adult series is just as exciting and action-packed. The chases are twice more thrilling, and the prize is literally bigger and more colossal than a golden cross, which in itself is already astonishing. And the Sins of the Father storylines make the character dynamics incredibly consequential, as they are all facing doubt and deciding which side they want to be on, the cooks or the pokes. That said, I have a few criticisms about this new season, but they don't minimize everything else that I like about it. By that I mean, while we wait for the arrival of Indiana Jones 5 in theaters later this year, Outer Banks Season 3 is here to reignite our enthusiasm for treasure hunting. Created and executive produced by Jonas Pate, Josh Pate, and Shannon Burke, after losing the gold and fleeing the Outer Banks, Season 3 finds the Pogues washed ashore on a desert island that, for a brief moment, seems like an idyllic home. Officially deemed Poglandia, the island's new residents spend their days fishing, swimming, and reveling in the carefree lifestyle of their temporary dwelling. But things quickly go south for John B., Sarah, Kiara, Pope, JJ, and Cleo when they find themselves once again caught up in a race for the treasure quite literally running for their lives. They're broke and far from home, they can't trust anyone, Ward and Rafe are hungry for revenge, and there's a ruthless Caribbean Don who will stop at nothing to find the bounty. Was the treasure ever within their reach, or was it all a trap to stop them once and for all? Either way, it's the Pogues against the world, and the only way out is together. Starring Chase Stokes, Madeline Klein, Madison Bailey, Jonathan Davis, Rudy Pankow, Austin North, Drew Starkey, Carlasia Grant, Charles Halford, Elizabeth Mitchell, Lou Ferrino Jr., and Charles Esten. Obviously, there are details that I'm not allowed to share with you here since this is a spoiler-free review. So if I sound like I'm talking cryptically, well, you'll understand why. But basically, there are 10 episodes in this new season, just like how it's always been on this show. And the final episode runs longer than the rest of them. Now, clearly, the writers wanted to expand the story logistically, but at the same time, they also wanted the characters to occasionally return to their original location, so as to not piss off the fans who could be wondering, hey, then why do you call it the Outer Banks if it's not gonna be set in Outer Banks? Well, I guess one funny way to put it is, you can take the pokes out of Outer Banks, but you can't take the Outer Banks out of the pokes. So, from the Royal Merchant, to the Golden Cross, to now El Dorado, aka the City of Gold. There's a new bad guy in town, his name is Carlos Singh, and his ruthlessness makes Ward Cameron seem timid by comparison. And the return of John B's dad, Big John, complicates John B's relationship with the rest of his team, including his girl, Sarah. Now, the family dilemmas and the romantic relationships in the previous seasons were a bit shaky, and they were not very well written, and they often distracted from their little Mission Impossible. But now, instead of finding moderation, if you will, the writers just sort of flipped the extreme the other way around. This time, you get more of the treasure hunting, while the romantic complexities come across as in between fillers. But don't worry, those of you who like a love triangle and those of you who want to see that person ends up with that person will get your thirst quenched, so to speak. Although some of the ways in which they get to that point is a bit sappy and predictable, if you ask me. So, do I like this season 3 better than I did season 1 and 2? Yes, absolutely. Because in this one, it's always go, go, go. 
the plot slows down only for once in a while. In season 3, the characters are always moving. There's all kinds of heists in action. There's the heist that John B and Big John are doing. There's the heist that the whole Pokes team are doing. And there's the heist that JJ is doing all by himself, solo style. Something is always happening. I mean, these are very adrenaline pumping, pulse pounding episodes. Evading arrest, getting arrested, escaping from arrest. Especially when you have a character like JJ who's driven by spontaneous emotion and reaction instead of logic. Now, as far as Rave and Ward and the Cooks, there's only so much I can tell you here without spilling spoilers. But it goes to what I said earlier about it being the sins of the fathers. On the one hand, it's John B and his dad, Big John. And on the other hand, it's Rafe and his dad, Ward. And it's an interesting juxtaposition that underlines how obsession negatively impacts their respective father-son relationships. The writers managed to play that out in a very profound and thought-provoking way. That said, I really don't like how this season 3 treats one of my favorite characters, Sarah. Without giving too much away, they basically make Sarah out to be a pariah. Sure, Sarah makes mistakes, but the way the writers put her in that situation falls into the backward thinking of demonizing women and making the guys, in this case John B., seem like he has no responsibility in the matter. I just feel that the way that they go about that whole situation is a bit tone deaf, but that's my opinion on it. Overall, how the Pokes stick together and look out for one another is commendable. This is a deeply entertaining new season through and through. And just when you thought that they've reached a conclusion, well, lo and behold, they've recently announced that Netflix is renewing Outer Banks for season 4. Hooray! We're gonna get season 4, baby! So the Pokes only have a few moments to be complacent before the next big adventure entices them once again.